All this is doing is convincing me I'm blind. And I would die in nature. Okay. Could not survive out there. Got it. Rawr. <laughs> hey, beautiful players. What's up? Shandiver here, and we're checking out Meet the World's Worst Roommate. So this is, like, he's... Oh, hold on. So this is Casual Geographic, and dude, so freaking awesome. And I absolutely, if you haven't seen anything that they've done, all the links down below, they're fantastic. But I love it because I like the chance to learn something, and I thought this one looked cool. So let's check it out. Meet the world's worst roommate. Much live. If you think your life sucks, be glad you're not this fish. Life kind of sucks, but uh, this fish has I, a I don't have that. This fish has a Simothoa exigua, but its real name is a tongue-eating louse. And that's because it'll enter the fish by climbing through the gills and crawling into its mouth. Then this parasite cuts all the oh. blood vessels in the tongue until it shrivels up and dies. And this parasite becomes the tongue. For as long as the host fish is alive, the tongue eater lives rent free in its mouth, either feeding off of whatever the fish eats or straight up living off the blood of its host. Fish use their tongues to help them swallow food, but with its original tongue destroyed, the tongue eater helps keep the fish alive by bringing food down its throat. But honestly, that's the very least they can do. Now the messed up part is if that parasite dies, then the fish will probably become a pack too since it won't be able to eat and it'll starve to past tense. It's the only parasite that actually replaces one of the body parts of its host and once it does, it's there for life because the fish becomes dependent on it. Yeah, it's a toxic relationship. To add insult to whatever the f you want to call this, if the fish dies, the parasite can always move on by detaching itself from the stub of a tongue and swimming out the fish's mouth. Probably to find the next victim to leech off. Like Instagram models with child support. See you, Brittany Renner. So yeah, kind of a dick move. At least after this parasite blinds the shark by eating its- Oh, okay, so quick pause. That's wild. Like, I would- I'm so glad that any of the, like, parasitic stuff that goes on in, like, the human-wise is stuff that just attaches. Like, I mean, I know there's, like, those super scary ones that are all internal and everything, but that's so rare. Like, I think this is, like, fairly common, right, for fish? Like, there's so many images of all these different fish with this. I would be so upset if that was like a normal thing. Like even the next one, look, he said something about it attaching to the eye. Like, yeah, I'll take like a tiny tick over something that ate my tongue and then has to stay there for me to be alive. That's awful. All right, continuing. Need <laughs> venom to be toxic as. Wait, where did this I? This is one of the nastiest things in the entire ocean. Is the fish a disability? Dick move. Probably to find the next victim to leech off. Okay, like hold on. Instagram models with child support. See you, Brittany Renner. So yeah, kind of a dick move. At least after this Look parasite blinds a shark by eating its cornea, it acts as a fishing lure which helps a Greenland shark catch more food. But the oh. tongue eater hands the fish a disability only to end up as its crutch. Cause just like people, you don't need venom to be toxic as f This is one of the nastiest things in the entire ocean. Bah. This is a hagfish, and its claim to fame oh. is that if it feels afraid or threatened in any way, it'll start releasing loads of slime. The idea is that if you try to eat it, the end game involves choking to death on demon discharge. A motivated hagfish can fill a five gallon bucket full of slime in only a couple of minutes. Basically, it's like a... How do I say this without getting banned? <laughs> it's like this, but in Spanish. I don't think I'm allowed to explain any further. I don't it's know. It's honestly to the point where even sharks avoid them because the hagfish can produce so much slimy, gooey nonsense that it can actually clog the shark's gills and basically Ooh. choke them. This is what happens when a car carrying hagfish gets rear-ended. <gasps> because hagfish slime themselves in fear, it shut down traffic on both sides for three hours. All while making the roads look like a humpback that just discovered whale hub. That's not even the worst thing about them, because I didn't tell you how this satanic waterworm eats. The hagfish will bury itself into a corpse and eat the rotting, decaying body that was probably laying there for days from the inside out. And as a scavenger with no jaws, the hagfish often enters the body through the softest spot, which is usually the back door exit. This is what happens when the save as draft button is too small and you end up posting some bullshit instead. It just comes straight at me again. Oh, how intimidating is this? Yes! What the heck? So apparently there's a lot- Super quick before we go into that one. So the only reason I know about hagfish is... I'm- Was it Dirty Jobs? I was watching something and I think they make wallets out of them. So they grow them in like giant vats. I totally need to look this up. I might just be like saying the craziest stuff ever. But I'm fairly certain. Remind me to look it up. Yes! So apparently there's a lot of people that didn't know we have snakes in the ocean. I'm not talking about your ex at the beach. I'm talking about the venomous, ah. toxic kill you kind. Yeah, that didn't narrow it down. Nah, but sea snakes are an actual thing. They're there's almost cute. 60 species of them, and after years of plot development, they've adapted to live where they honestly have no business. Because they have larger lungs than normal, some of them can hold their breath for eight hours. You can clock in for a shift at work and still leave the building before this snake needs air. That's because some of these snakes can absorb oxygen through their skin. 
Also, these snakes can dive up to 300 feet straight down, because of course they can. If you didn't already know that, this right here is probably the worst possible way to find out. And because that obviously just wasn't enough, some of the most venomous snakes on the planet are actually the ones in the ocean. This oh, is an sucks. olive sea snake, and it's toxic enough to put 60 men into gods recently deleted. And then you have the black banded sea crate, whose venom is 10 times stronger than a cobra's. Ooh. They're naturally shy though, so they won't attack you unless you honestly give them a reason. But when you have the power to put an entire family reunion into dirt, the least nature can do is make you an introvert. Also, this snake yeah. will create an optical illusion that makes it look like it's facing the other direction and swimming backwards. Meaning, if you try to grab one and pick the wrong end, you can go from an is to a was expeditiously. But the biggest op of all is probably the Belcher Sea Snake. They're not super dangerous because they rarely bite, and when they do, they don't release all their venom. That being said, because it's the most venomous snake in the ocean, they could put 100 men in coffins with one bite. Oh. Symptoms after getting bit include muscle pain, tongue swelling, convulsions, and eventually becoming a story on the 9 o'clock news. Now, I could be wrong, but that might have been the snake in this video. So yeah, this is proof that nature does not care about your feelings. This fish is the most Australian thing ever. Look at Honestly, him. a middle finger from nature. He Most like animals have to choose, like you can have camouflage like the snow leopard that's looking right at you, or you Where? can stand out but only by being toxic like this frog. Middle finger from nature. He just looks like a rock. I kind of feel bad for him. Nature. Most animals have Okay, so he said there's a leopard here? I feel like he's lying. You have to choose, like you can have camouflage like the snow leopard that's looking right at you. Snow leopard that's looking right at you? You see it? Okay, let's go. Rock, rock, rock. I'm looking for eyes. I think eyes are always the thing that I'm like, oh, there it is. I just look like more rocks. Okay, snow. Wait, are snow snow leopards would be white, right? Or are they just in the snow and they're brown? This is why I watch him. I learn stuff because I don't know all the things and I'd like to know more. Nope, I don't freaking see it. Guys, help me. No leopard that's looking right at you. I feel like he's lying. You liar. Is that a nose? No. I feel pranked. Okay. Or you can stand out, but only by being toxic like this frog. Or you can be this hell spawn with gills and be both. Because if the stonefish doesn't move, it can cosplay as just another rock in the water. The bad news is, it's the most venomous fish on the planet with dorsal that spines as sharp as hypodermic needles. If you accidentally step on a stonefish, those spines will extend and penetrate through your skin. All while injecting you with a life-threatening venom that, if not treated, can turn you into a hashtag in less than two hours. This homicide guppy produces toxins <laughs> that can cause excruciating pain, swelling, tissue death, and everything death. One victim told ABC News that getting stung felt like getting hit with a sledgehammer for an hour straight. Ugh. And again, if you don't get medical attention fast enough, 60 minutes won't just be a show on CBS. It'll be your expiration date. Scientifically speaking, that's a dick move. Because you yeah. see, most poisonous and venomous animals have the decency to at least warn you before they airdrop you to God's inbox. This octopus will flash its blue rings and the dark frog's bright colors are to warn the jungle senses that touching it means touching the heaven gates. But like a true <laughs> menace, a stonefish doesn't give a warning until it's six inches is. deep in I your face. I see that one. Fun fact, there's four of them in this picture. Oh, are you oh and because one? Australia lives on veteran difficulty, the stonefish can survive out of water for up to 24 what? hours. That's horrible. Also, its venom lowers your white blood cell count, meaning you can catch an infection even after you get treated. Wow. All that from a fish that looks like a rock. It's like if stop signs were made in braille. It's like a red flag, but you're colorblind. Because in Australia, mistaking a stonefish for the first part of its name can get you put under a stone. F this fish and whoever made it. Are we really just going to ignore the fact that killer whales give sharks PTSD? Welcome to Animal I Logic. Let's talk about it. Orcas are the most disrespectful animal on the planet. And that's exactly what happens love when no them. one can check you. Other than humans, the only thing that can take on an orca and win is a bigger orca. Because at the top of the food chain, orcas bully the entire underwater census and they <laughs> legitimately traumatize great white sharks. If Jaws happens to encounter an orca near their hunting grounds, they'll abandon the area for up to a year. And for good reason. Orcas actually figured out that if they flip over sharks, they can induce tonic immobility, paralyzing the shark while the Bundy dolphins take its liver, heart, testes, and probably its life too. Killer whales haven't seen punting seals up to 80 feet in the air just like a field goal. Researchers believe they do this to either paralyze a seal or loosen its skin. But there's always that chance that these psychopaths do this because they find joy in putting a seal in the clouds. They're also Probably intelligent fun. enough to work together to create a wave that's so powerful that it knocks the seal completely off the ice. And just when he thinks he's safe on the beach, Steroid Flipper reminds him it's an orca's world and he just lives in it. And even though they're built like an 8 to 12,000 pound equality symbol, they can launch themselves up to 15 feet in the air. Really bad news if you're a bottlenose in the wrong place. And they slap stingrays. 
just because they can. Just this swimming sociopath can. is the most oppressive force in the entire ocean, and even though a wild orc has never caused a human obituary, some have started ramming into sailing boats off the coast of Spain and Portugal, damaging the boats and injuring the crew. Considering orcas are one of the most intelligent creatures on the planet, there was 100% malicious intent. And because yeah. this ocean Oreo has a range of almost everywhere, a grocery list of almost everything, and their weaknesses only exist in fiction, the homicidal sea panda is truly a cheat code. Killer whales go through menopause, and it makes them the best grandmothers in the ocean. Aww. So orcas can live for 50, 60, some even reach 80 years, but the female will stop being able to have kids at around 30 to 40. Normally, shutting down the baby factory that early would be bad, but the female orcas that can't have kids anymore will then focus on raising their- That looks like where I grew up, actually. That, like... I wonder where this is from. That's weird, because we actually get a lot of orcas out there. I, I'm almost certain this is, like, near where I grew up. That's weird. Kids, kids. These grandmother orcas will lead their pod, using their decades of experience to teach all the younger ones the best places to find food. And in true grandmother fashion, the killer whales that grow up around this granny orca have a better chance of surviving and having kids Aww. of their own. And since the oldest orca was allegedly as old as the Titanic, they can even end up raising their great-grandchildren. By being that old head that we all need in our lives, the grandma sea panda makes sure that her genes keep getting passed down to the next generation by looking after her grandchildren. Yeah. This grandmother effect is because female orcas that don't have their own children to worry about have more time to focus on teaching and looking after their grandkids. Moral of this video, orcas are homicidal equality symbols that are the biggest bullies in the ocean. But they're also the biggest grandmama's boys on the planet, and that is the most wholesome thing I can it's ever so say sweet. about them. This is the stupidest thing I've ever gotten. I don't know, hold on real quick. So, freaking love killer whales. I think they're amazing, they're beautiful, they're strong and fierce and deadly, and I love them. I think they're super great. Like, the tossing the seals into the air and stuff, like, that's been captured so many times, because they just do it, and I... I where it's just for fun there was another video that was talking about them where they had like tossed them into the air and then like just like left it they killed it and they left it they're like well that was fun it was cool when it was alive what else are we gonna do <laughs> like i feel like their intelligence is really high when you start like doing things because it's fun like i don't know i love them think they're great let's carry on mad about but i'm making this video because if i have to have this argument one more time i'm gonna lose whatever's left in my mind Squidward is not a squid. He's an octopus. D don't comment yet, I know you're gonna say it. Octopus have eight tentacles and this punching bag with a nose has six. That's literally only because they thought it'd be easier to animate him that way. Also, okay. if he were a squid, he'd have two longer feeding tentacles that he'd have to drag around everywhere. Also, also, octopus have round bulbous heads and squids have triangle shaped domes. In case you don't believe me, because I know some of you won't, the literal creator of the show said it. You don't gotta listen to me, but I wish you would try to tell the man that drew the talking sponge that he's wrong. I mean, you can't now, but, uh, damn. Aww. In case you're wondering why his name is Squidward, well, Octoward just sounds stupid. You know what, since we're on the subject, some male octopus pack their, you know, baby-making equipment on their mantle near their head, and it's called the Hectocotylus. So, yeah, two things. That might not be a nose, and there's a reason oh. Bro never wears pants. <gasps> That's amazing. Wow. That is an Australian giant cuttlefish. Normally having Australian and giant in your name means you're a menace to society, but they're actually pretty chill. It's a cephalopod, meaning it's He's basically so the little brother of octopus and squid. Cuttlefish have W-shaped pupils to balance out uneven levels of light where they live. And they can see forms of light that are pretty much invisible to us. Wow. So in an experiment, scientists put 3D glasses on cuttlefish and it <gasps> turns out they use depth perception just like us. Something about this just makes me happy. It's Cuttlefish really can also change colors and patterns in seconds, and as breathing kaleidoscopes, they'll use this to hypnotize crabs before they retire them from life. But they can also use this color change to hide to avoid being put on the shirt themselves. I don't see Seriously, him. Oh, he's in middle. there somewhere. He's right there. It's also, just... since the males are bigger than the females, some of the smaller males will pretend to be females. By changing his skin pattern and hiding the special arm that only the males have, this cross dresser sneaks past the other guys and then plants his seed in the female when the others aren't looking. I love yeah, that they're really tactic. smart. How smart, you ask? Well, it turns out they're smart enough to pass a snack test. Y'all remember that TikTok trend where they would put a snack in front of a little kid and then tell them not to eat it so they could get a better snack? But it turns yeah. out cuttlefish can be trained to have self-control. The best ones would wow. resist eating a treat that was right in front of them for almost three minutes as long as it meant they got a better treat in return. Moral of this video, cuttlefish are really freaking cool. They're super cool. I love them. Cuttlefish are like, uh, I really, really love seeing them. And I was like, you know, you go on YouTube and you need to go through like a total rabbit hole of like information and content. Ended up on like a fishing ship that was like chopping them up to be sold at the market. It was freaking awful and I hated it. So I feel really bad for the cuttlefish because 
tired of consuming them. Look at these beautiful beasts. They're so lovely. I absolutely adore them. Yeah. Big thanks. He makes amazing content. Again, I'm going to link everything because he's awesome. Like, total binge-worthy content. He was on TikTok for the most part, and I, it looks like he's making all of his stuff over on YouTube, and I'm really, really glad of that. It's just, it's perfect. It's the perfect amount of information, enough curiosity and interest that if like, oh, I didn't know that about the cuttlefish. I'm going to go look. You know, I like that. I like the positive spread of information and, you know, global learning. It's lovely. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys had fun. I still am really upset that I can't see that freaking guy, the snow one in the mountains. <laughs> and again, I think, I just don't think it's there, but it has to be, right? Where it was the rock one. So just before him, that's not him. There it is. I'm gonna take a look again, just in case, cause honestly, it is bugging me. All this is doing is convincing me I'm blind. And I would die in nature. Okay. Could not survive out there. Got it. All right. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed. I love you so much. Sorry. If you do see it, please tell me. I would like to find it as well. <laughs> Slightly increase my chances of surviving. <laughs> All the love, beautiful bears. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye.